What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host White River Rambo and this little 14 foot airboat hull has been my personal beater for the last, I don't know, four or five years and it's affectionately called the Greasy Spoon. <laughs> the Greasy Spoon is 88 inches wide at the transom with a brand new 22 uh, 70 horsepower Yamaha does about 34 mile an hour and it will float in inches of water. It's an exceptional little troller boat. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about stepping into lithium. Now, let's look at the Greasy Spoon setup and then we'll talk about a customer's boat that we just installed a brand new set of lithiums in. The Spoon is all about saving weight. You can see the setup here. There's nothing frivolous, just a straight deck, no seating, a ultralight light setup, and a really small generator, as well as a hunt pod, you know, set up back here in the back. As far as batteries go, I still have one lead acid to be able to start the, the engine and run the accessories. However, for the troller motor, I went with lithium. Now these are very, very small. You can see they're only about the size of my hand, okay, each one of them. And these are 50 amp hour LifePo 4 lithiums. In a 50 amp hour, those weigh about 13 and a half pounds a piece. And they are on the cheaper variety. Now that entire battery setup, including the charger, cost me $600. Yeah, 600 bucks. Before we get into price, we need to break down all the things that make lithium great. We already said that those two batteries together weigh like 28 pounds, so that's already a very big aspect, especially in the bow fishing world. But what are some of the other aspects that we can talk about when looking at lithium batteries? 50 amp hour, honestly, on that little boat will get me about eight hours of runtime. That's pretty cool, right? Given the price of 150 bucks, it was a kind of a no brainer for me. But what if you want the ultimate? What if you consider yourself an all day sportsman and you need the additional capacity? Well, that's when you need to step up to the 100 amp hour lithium. Before we get into all this, let's structure the video a little bit. I'm gonna tell you all the differences between lead acid and lithium and then we'll come back and discuss all the attributes and why it's a big deal. There is no way that I would be able to pick this up with one hand if it were lead acid. But with a lithium, I could pick it up with one finger. This 100 amp hour Life Pro Lithium battery is right about 14 pounds. And that is pretty amazing when you consider the amount of power this is able to produce. The difference between lead acid and lithium in weight is uh, like 70 to 14 when you're talking about like a 31 class AGM versus this, okay? Whatever that ratio is, like four to one, I, I don't know, I, we're not worried about that. Lead or any wet cell battery deteriorates in voltage as it deteriorates in capacity and a lead acid wet cell battery, you should never run below 60%. Once you get to 12 volts, it's done. If you run it down to 11, you're beginning to do damage to that battery and shorten its lifespan. It will not charge over and over and over again down to 11 volts, but if you never go below 12, it'll charge over and over and over again and have a really long extended life. This lithium, however, its voltage doesn't decrease when its capacity decreases. It will provide 12.8 volts solid all the way across the line until the battery or the BP, I'm sorry, the BMS, the battery management system says, we're done. We're not providing enough amperage and we shut off. Okay. So the battery management system is key to a lithium battery. And you want to make sure that whatever battery you buy has one. We'll get more into that here in just a second. But that allows this 100 amp hour rating, all of it to be used versus a lead acid that might be rated at 120 amp hours, but really you're only capable of using about 50 of it. That's the key. And that is why I bought 50 amp hour lithiums for my tiny boat. 
I can get about the same runtime out of those than I can a 100 amp hour lead acid. Now, on my install, I actually did put a breaker on there, probably out of force of habit. Um, and the customer wanted one anyway, but I think with a battery management system, you really don't need a breaker anymore because the battery has a breaker built into it. Just kind of my two cents. Um, but I, you know, always safe than sorry or better safe than sorry. You probably ought to put one in a boat anyway. Um, now, you know, it is widely talked about how lithiums don't work in cold weather. This is true. Honestly, lead acid doesn't work in cold weather either. Now, here's, here's the uh, the manual that comes with the Chin batteries that I just put in this uh, customer's boat. And according to the manual, um, the battery management system will shut off at negative 4 degrees. And it'll also shut off at 122 degrees. So, you want to keep your battery compartment well ventilated um, and... In the dead of winter, if you live above the 39th parallel, you probably want to take your batteries out and bring them in the house in a controlled environment over those harsh winter months. Hmm. That's the only downside that I see to lithium because a lead acid in cold, cold weather, it would work. Like it would give you a little bit of runtime. It's not going to like it very much. And that runtime is going to be greatly decreased, but still going to work a little bit, right? Let's step into chargers. Um, I just installed this, uh, this NOCO, this NOCO, um, Genesis Pro. Okay. Um, I've been running NOCO chargers for like the last three years, I guess. Um, I have installed probably 15 of them in customers boats and my own personal boats and so far they've been flawless. The reason I like the Genesis Pro series is because it is rated for lithium charging. Now that battery management system that we talked about actually will shut a normal charger off. A normal charger, a digital charger for, you know, an onboard boat uh, for lead acid will charge up 14 and a half volts while it's charging. Well, the battery management system will not allow overcharging, and once something increases 13 and a half volts, it will shut the battery down. That is why you have to have one of the newer chargers from NOCO or from Mencota. Hi, Cece. How you doing, girl? Um, but one other aspect I want to talk about, the big batteries that we've just put in the boat, um, the full-size 100 amp-hour battery, uh, you can actually get that in a 24 volt battery, but I want to suggest that you not do that. Now over here, I have a 24 volt charger that I was forced to buy because I bought one of those 24 volt batteries. And I did not think about the charging issue that that brought. You see, a 24 volt battery has to have a 24 volt charger. Well, unfortunately, they don't make a marine onboard 24 volt charger, and I had to buy this unit, which was about 150 bucks, and it's not marine ready, so I'm not going to be mounting it in the boat. I have to take it in and out all the time. Now, batteries, okay, there's chins, there's amper time, there's morose, there's like, there is all kinds of different brands when it comes to lithium batteries, but the Chins and the Amper Time have been around a little bit. And if you look these up on Amazon, you'll see that they've sold, you know, thousands of them. So I'm kind of sticking with the orange and black when I'm buying batteries. You just, you'll see, right? You, literally, the only thing that is different in this battery versus thousands of others is the sticker that's on the front of it. That's kind of how China works, right? So I wouldn't fret a whole lot, but on the other side of that, I'm not going to go buy a Dakota Lithium because it is a brand, okay? I'm not going to spend three times as much on this battery. How much is this battery? 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt um, LifePo Lithium with a BMS system. 350 bucks? Yeah, it's the same as 
a lead acid. Now, if this were a brand, if it said Tracker on it or Bass Pro or Cabela's or whatever, it'd be $1,000. And we as consumers kind of understand how marketing works, right? So I'm going to leave it at that. I buy a, a lot of Chinese electronics, and this is kind of the same way. So I probably not going to be buying a brand that is overpricing their items when I can buy something at Amazon and buy three of them for the price that they charge for one. Um, lead acid throughout the day, what you started the day running 30% at, seven hours in, now you're running 100% to try to keep up the same pace that you've been fishing all day, right? Well, you're asking more and more from the battery because you're putting more and more of a load on it. And once that bell curve starts to go, she drops off really quick, right? Lithium, on the other hand, it goes and goes and goes until there ain't no more and it shuts off. And I've witnessed this a few times myself. I'm, I'm going along, I'm, I'm eight hours into the night and I'm fishing along and all of a sudden the battery kicks out or the trolling motor kicks out. And I think, well, shoot, did I just blow a board? Did I just blow a breaker? Are my batteries dead? And I go back and I look, no, the breaker's not throwed. And I reset the breaker, which actually resets the battery management system. <laughs> I'll run back up, turn on the trolling motor. Oh, okay, I'm good. Five seconds later, it shuts off again. Well, that's the battery management system. It will allow a high output for five seconds. And once the battery gets to the point where it's dead and the battery management system is shut off, once it is reset, you can get a little bit of power out of it for like five seconds. That's it. And then the battery management system says, nope, our voltage is too low. You're going to do damage to the battery. We're going to shut off. Well, instead of your night tapering to an end, your night just shuts off like that. Well, it looks like overnight our NOCO has charged our batteries and we uh, we mounted our NOCO on, uh, on the midship up in front of the boat and then we ran our, our wires to a hard plug. I can go ahead and remove this and put the dust cover right back over top of it. That's out of the way. Everything's zipped up nice and neat and as you can see, it's out of the way. Now, what the customer is going to be running is an 80-pound Fortrex hand control. And you see, well, I used an Anderson connector with some uh, abrasion-resistant wire loom. And with the Anderson connector, we put a, a flush mount Anderson connector right here. And then we moved this plug that ProDrive originally put right here, which would be, you know, well within tripping distance. So we moved it out of the way, put it right here in the front. That way the customer have a little bit more user-friendly boat. Now within the front hatch here, I went ahead and I put 200 amp hour uh, lithiums. And then I put my, uh, put my breaker right here where it's easy to get to. Go ahead and leave that open. Um, see, I got two of them mounted side by side with a battery hold down. And then I like to use a little bit of EVA foam to give a little bit of uh, vibration, uh, you know, dampening to the system. And just a little pan to keep it, uh, to keep everything centered, keep it from bouncing around. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope you've enjoyed the discussion about lithium. We've got another happy customer here at the shop. And yeah, he's ready for years of abuse. And as long as he keeps it out of the extreme cold or extreme hot temperatures, he should have a good setup for nearly a decade. So blow up the comments. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about brands, about capacity, about your needs as a fisherman. Go ahead and drop in the comments. It's a community. We'll help each other out. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and maybe you can share this video with your buddy who's struggling with his boat setup. I'll see y'all. Be safe.
Don't forget to wear the personal flotation devices, and I'll see you out there on the water.